So today we're doing a little review. Hopefully this video will be a quick one and you can work on some problems and then uh, that should be it. So here we go. We are going to first review ratios, rates, and proportions. And we'll do some problems and uh, hopefully most of this will come back to you as we do that. What is a ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division with the same units. And I don't know why that's not popping up, so I won't deal with it. Um, comparison of two numbers by division. And these are the same units. So if you have inches and feet, you got to change them over. Uh, that's supposed to be a U. Same units. Okay? A rate, on the other hand, is a ratio in which the units are different. So that is like your miles per hour, miles per gallon, feet per second, whatever. Example, Jack was paid $304 for working 16 hours and Jill earned $246 for working 12 hours. Who earns more money per hour? Question, ratio or rate? Well, the way to answer that is to first think about if I could, could I convert dollars into hours? No. I could convert minutes to hours, seconds to hours to seconds, etc. But I can't convert dollars into hours. So this is actually a rate. And it's dollars per hour. And we have $304 for 16 hours and $246 for 12 hours. And which is more money? I think Jill earns more money because we get 19 for the first one dollars per hour. And we get $20.50 for the second one. So Jill is the winner. Go Jill. All right. <clears throat> So I'm going to do a couple of these with you, and then I'm going to go on to proportions because uh, I don't think you need me to do all of them. So why don't we look down at number three, since that one's a little bit more challenging, and that's more like what we're doing this year than last year. The lengths of an opposite pair of sides of a square are each multiplied by five, while the lengths of the other two sides remain the same. What is the ratio of the perimeter of the rectangle thus formed to the perimeter of the original square? Okay, so pictures are worth a thousand words. You can do lot statements, but pictures are way more fun. All right, so I have my original square, and they're saying that the lengths are each multiplied by five, while the other two sides remain the same to form our new figure. All right, so the perimeter of the square, everybody, it's going to be 4x, and the perimeter of the rectangle is going to be dun, 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 5x plus x, 6x plus 5x, 11x plus x. Just because you don't see these there doesn't mean they are exist. They are exist. Okay, so the perimeter of the rectangle is 12x. I don't know what this was. This could have been 1, it could have been 7, it could have been 243. I don't know. I know that the relationship is that it's 5 times as long, and then it's uh, the sides, the other side is the same. So what is the ratio of the perimeter? It's 12x to 4x, or 3 to 1. Either notation would be fine there. Let's look at uh, how about four, since those tend to befuddle some of you. The measures of three angles of a triangle are in a ratio of two to three to seven. That means the angles could be 20 to 30 to 70. Not really, because that wouldn't make a triangle, but that's essentially what it's saying. So it could be if this was the multiplier was 5, I let x be my multiplier. If the multiplier is 5, then they would still be in a ratio of 10 to 15 to 35, which is still 2, 3 to 7 reduced. Okay, So x is my multiplier, but we do that have that additional constraint that this is a triangle, and the sum of the, all the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is always, you got it, 180. So I'm going to have 2x plus 3x plus 7x 
equals 180. Solve for x. Drum roll, please. x is 15. And then always go back and look for the original question, which in this case was, what is the measure, measure of the largest angle of the triangle? So the largest angle would be my 7x. And 7 times 15 is 105 degrees, final answer. Okay, Make sure you go back and look for that original question. Let's go on to the proportion notes now. What is a proportion? Do you remember? Clear out the cobwebs. A proportion is a statement that two ratios are equal. That is a mathematical statement. A mathematical statement is typically expressed as an equation. <clears throat> they can be written as, okay, the first one, it's no matter how they are expressed or written, it is still said the same. In other words, A is to B as C is to D. It's also verbalized the same way here. A is to B as C is to D. And how do we solve a proportion? Yeehaw! You cross multiply. Do not cross cancel. This is where we're saying the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. Okay? So if I think about that, <clears throat> if you think about the second notation, let's say 3 is to 6 as 5 is to 10. Right? It's true. The product of the means, these are my means, equals the product of the extremes. These are my extremes. Is it true? Sure. 30 and 30, yes? <clears throat> Let's do some examples. Um, so I'll pick one of the harder ones again. These aren't too bad. You guys should have these. And again, here you're just going to, number two, you're just going to multiply your products of your means equals your product of the extremes and solve. Uh, so let's do number five together. I'm going to multiply the 2x plus 1 by the 5, and I'm going to multiply the 6x minus 9 by the 3. Notice my use of parentheses. Distribution is key here. So I will get 18x minus 27 equals, hi Heidi, 10x plus 5, and then I solve that. So if you go ahead, work down, and solve, you should get x equals 4. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Um, let's see, this is one-sided, so let's say I do number, well, I'll do seven because it's geometry and you guys don't like geometry even though I love it. All right, the denominator of a fraction is 30 more than the numerator. If 10 is added to the numerator, that's not really geometry. I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do number eight. Okay, a mushroom pizza covers, requires five ounces of fresh mushrooms. At this rate, how many pizzas will 30 ounces cover. The key thing with proportions is to set up a word example. So I'm going to do ounces over pizza. And that will keep me to being consistent. So 5 ounces of mushrooms uh, for one pizza. At this rate, how many pizzas will 30 ounces? Well, my ounces goes on the top then. And then I want to know how many pizzas is x. So 5x equals 30 and x equals 6. So anything I did not do on these two pages is for you to do. And let's see, we're only at eight minutes there. Well, almost nine, but you should be done shortly. Have a good night.